First, let's pay homage to the lineage gurus. Homage to the Venerable Mang Liao Ming. Homage to Master Sakya Zeng Kong. Homage to His Holiness the 16th Kamapa. Homage to Master Dubtan Torji. Homage to the three jewels of the altar. Homage to the main deity of the group practice tonight. The five Dhyani Tathagatas. The four heavenly kings. Jambala. The yellow Jambala. Sumo. Tanzan Katsu, Tutan City, all Dhamma masters, Dhamma educators, Dhamma teachers, Dhamma lecturers, Dhamma assistants, directors of temples and chapters, and all disciples present here and over the internet. Good evening, how do you do? I steru Sarangi Ola Amiko Ola Amiko de Kero Mucho Sukoin Sukoin Ijiva Ijiva Kimoji Kimochi e Jumi Jumi Yapi Yapi Bling 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 Kombangwa Kombangwa this evening, before the Dharma teaching, I would like to tell a joke to start it. The joke goes, last night I could not s fall asleep. I was going to count the sheep, but when I was thinking about my lovely wife, I decided to respect her. Instead, I started to count wives. So, one wife, two wives, three wives, the more I count, the more excited I became. Till the end, I could not sleep all night. So, I felt from this joke, there are many things there are many things cannot be resolved with one same method. Therefore, when the Buddha taught sentient beings, he could not use the same method for everybody. Instead, according to the different personalities, habitual tendencies, or spiritual roots. For those with strong spiritual root, he would teach 
uh, the Buddha Dharma for those with sharp spiritual roots. And for the middling spiritual root, they were taught the middling spiritual root Buddha Dharma. And then for the general, the common people, they were just taught uh, the common Buddha Dharma for the common people. Therefore, Sakyamuni Buddha gave lots of Dharma teachings. Sentient beings cannot, it's impossible for sentient beings to learn all the Buddha Dharma of the Buddha. They could just choose the Buddha Dharma that has affinity with them. So now we will do the question and answer. This is from Brunei, Nianhua Han Hong. Grandmaster, you taught us that the hundred syllable mantra is to eradicate karma. If I make mistakes in my consciousness, in a split of a second, which is the seed of evil, then immediately I chant the hundred syllable mantra three or seven times. How do I make the merit dedication for the transgressions I just created? Is the cause of the evil still there? This is the first question. Like a second earlier in my conscience, I made a mistake. That's what he meant. That it was not manifested in actions. It was just in the thoughts that you made the mistake a second ago. And immediately he chanted the mantra three or seven times and make the merit dedication. Is the evil cause still there? According to the Siddhikarpa Sutra, the sentient beings. Yeah. That any thought that they have is karmic. The fact that you realize that you made the mistake a second ago in your consciousness and that you're able to chant hundred syllable mandala three or seven times, in my opinion, the cause of this evil is no longer there. You know why? Because the karma is not very deep. You have not formed a grave mistake yet. Okay, let me give a simple example. That, that you feel itch on your hand. Itch, itching. And then you use an ointment and you put ointment on it. And the itch is gone. And 
and there's no effect the next day. But if your skin is itchy and then you scratch it, and after you scratch it, there's a mark, and you perhaps have not been able to alleviate the itch. So that means you have left an imprint. Then the cause of the evil would still be there. You know it's itching there, and then you use an, an anti-itch ointment on it, then the itch would disappear. And there's no print, no mark on the next day, then that's not, that's nothing. So the cause of evil, a bad cause, they are uh, the shallow one or the deep one. If it's shallow, you use the hundred mantra three or seven times, then you wipe it off and it's gone. But if it is deep, then you cannot eliminate it. So if you make a mistake in your consciousness a second ago, and immediately you realize it, and you chant the hundred syllable mantra three times or seven times, because three or seven times is to transform it into void, then it's no longer there. But if you don't feel it, then it would get deeper and deeper. Then once it's deeply etched, then it would be hard to alleviate it. Then the evil cause would still be there. But if you realize it and immediately eradicate it, then there is no effect of it. Now, please guide Buddhas and Bodhisattvas whether what I said was right. And they said it's correct. Just talking about the thoughts. As soon as it's improper, you correct it immediately. So this kind of person is considered to have sharp spiritual root, to know that those are mistakes in the mind. And mistakes in the actions are deeper than mistakes in the thoughts. So he made the mistakes in the mind and immediately he corrected it. Most of the mistakes created in actions cannot except when you do your repentance, you experience the true repentance signs. For example, someone dreamt that uh, she was showering, bathing, to cleanse the dirt and the filth of her body. That's one of the repentance signs. Or if you dream that lots of insects coming out from your body, that's one of the repentance signs. 
or if you dream of eating white food and spitting out black food, that's also another kind of repentance signs. Or if you dream of Vajrasattva giving you blessings on your head, or your lineage root guru giving you blessings on your head, those are all wonderful repentance signs. Or you dream that you're riding on a white horse flying in the sky, or you dream of sitting on top of a white lotus flying in the sky. Those are all excellent repentance signs. So after you're repenting and you receive good repentance signs, that means your bad karma has been eradicated. If you don't have any repentance sign, even after performing the repentance for a thousand times, it's still useless. So practicing repentance, you have to have repentance signs. Once you have repentance sign, you would have light on your face. And without repentance signs, your face would still be black or dark, dark. That uh, your spirit is uh, fuzzy and you're sick and your eyes uh, lack lusterless and that your forehead is also dark. Those are signs of no repentance. Second, also there was a master who taught us at one of the seminars. He said, repentance in the mind is wrong. What are, what are these words? I'm not it's not clear. What is visualizing repentance in the mind is wrong. By thinking of the past mistakes is the same as repeating it again in the mind. So thinking, thinking of the your past mistakes is creating mistakes again in the mind. What the heck? What are you talking about? So the proper way to repent is by chanting the repentance verse and never to repeat the mistake again. The last statement is okay. But the first statement is, oh my God. So thinking about past mistakes is the same as repeating it again in the mind. If you realize or if you think that your past mistakes or your past actions are mistakes, then you should repent. Why can't you think about your past mistakes? How could it be that by thinking about it, you're repeating it again? That in a day, you have to be in introspective, you have to reflect upon yourself. Then you're just realizing your past mistakes and that's really ridiculous to say that by thinking about them, you're repeating them again. That's ridiculous. Every day, you have to reflect about, reflect upon your mistakes. How could you say that's creating karma again? Because by thinking of your past mistakes, you want to chant the repentance verse and never to repeat it again. So this person asks, if you're not 
introspective on our past transgression, how can we truly repent? That's a good question. So being reflective is to reflect upon our past mistakes, knowing that they are mistakes, we perform the repentance practice. Not like what the Master said, this statement was wrong. This Master taught the wrong thing, saying that repentance in the mind is wrong. I don't understand what they're talking about here. You have to think about your own past mistakes and to truly repent. That's the second question and my answer. Next one from Macau, Macau, China. Oh, the Vajra scepter and bell can be played for purification, enrichment, magnetization, and subjugation. How about for the treasure division? Please advise. What is purification? This is how you play the Vajra Bell and Vajra Scepter. This is for enrichment. This is for subjugation. And this is for magnetization. And what is the treasure? When you ring the bell, when you strike the bell, when you strike the bell, when you use the Vajra scepter to strike the bell, that's the treasure. This is purification, enrichment, subjugation, and magnetization. And that's the treasure. The first answer. Purification, enrichment, magnetization, and subjugation and the treasure. I included everything, right? Yes. That's good. I thought I forgot one. Question from Malaysia. Lianhua Li Hao. My question, if I, if I don't normally practice the four preliminary practices, nor the Guru Yoga, I just chant the mantra and sutra. May I just practice the smoke offering of Chen Resik? This is also a strange question by Lianhua Li Hao from Malaysia. If I don't normally practice the four preliminary practices nor the Nrut Guru Yuga, I just chant the mantra and the sutra. May I just practice the Chandrasik smoke offering? In my opinion, in our Dharma practice, it's best to start from the four preliminary practices, the Rut Guru Yoga, and it's fine if you also chant the mantra and the sutra. 
If you practice the four preliminary practices, it includes tantra mantra, mantra chanting. If you practice the root guru yoga, it also includes mantra chanting. When you practice the root guru yoga, you can add sutra chanting as well. And then if you want to practice the Chan Rasik small offering, it's fine too. It depends whether you have time or not. In my opinion, you can practice any one of the four preliminary practices, any one of them. Not all four together. You can just do the great prostrations. The more, the more you do it, the more, and then you practice the Chen Resik smoke offering. That would be fine. You have to first perform the preliminary practices, the preliminary practices, because the preliminary practices are the foundation of Tantric Buddhism. So the foundation is the four preliminary practices. Anyone that has taken refuge would have to start. with the four preliminary practices like Namo Gurupe, Namo Buddhaya, Namo Tamoya, Namo Sangyaya. Namo Gurupe, Namo Buddhaya, Namo Tamoya, Namo Sangyaya. This is reciting the Four Foot Refuge Mantra. That's also mantra. So you have to do it. You have in your four preliminary practices, and then you can add the Chandra Six Smoke Offering. You have to do the preliminary practices first. That's question from Lian Hua Li Hao in Malaysia. Grandmaster put great importance on the four preliminary practices. And you should complete those first before you do other practices. Or you can perform the four preliminary practices together with the Chandra Six Smoke Offering. That would be fine too. Uh, this is from Taiwan, Lian Jie. But the Jie without the water radical. This is the Chinese character. How do you pronounce that character? The same thing as Ji. How do you pronounce this character? <laughs> Who said it's pronounced C? Then you should s check when you go home. Master, if an ordained person has dementia, uh, and has lost his ability to practice, such as chanting sutra or meditating, does he or she 
have to maintain the ordination rules like eating uh, vegetarian food or wearing ordination robe, etc. Or is it okay for convenience sake to let him or her eat meat and wear comfortable clothing? Will this create bad karma for the family? A monk or nun that has dementia. He, he or she does not remember his family members. If it's still light, that sometimes only you you're only forgetful. Hmm? That's not called dementia. So if you just become forgetful, then you have to wear the Lama robe, like Grandmaster too. Like the vitamins that I take, it's different in the morning from the night. And sometimes I open my drawer, and then I take all the vitamins, including the ones that's supposed to be the morning ones. Is this considered dementia? And uh, vitamins that I supposed to eat in the morning, I eat it at night. And then what can I do? Because I already ate it, so and but that's just loss of memory, um, not consistently. So you still have to follow the rules, but um, the dementia is completely complete loss of memory. Then chanting sutra, meditating, uh, would be forgotten already. So, so then, just let it be. And they even forget what to wear. That he or she has forgotten that uh, they have been ordained. So, complete dementia. They don't recognize other people or they don't recognize themselves. They even forget that they have been ordained and there's nothing to maintain. So, for convenience, yeah, to return to normal life, there's no need because uh, he or she wouldn't know whether to eat meat or vegetarian, he or she wouldn't know either. So there would not be any bad karma for the family. As long as it's convenient to take care of them, it's fine. If you have complete dementia, then it's okay. As long as you can take care of him or her. And Singapore, Lianhua Jia Qian. Homage to the Lineage Sud Guru is Holmes Living Buddha Lian Sheng. My question is I'm still practicing the four preliminary practices. At this level, do I need to chant the Vajra mantras like Mahabala mantra? If I don't chant the Vajra mantra or protector mantra, 
then I don't have any protection, right? As long as you're a tantric Buddhist practitioner, as long as you're a tantrika, and you're practicing the four preliminary practices according to the Buddha, behind you, Vajrapani will be protecting you. Behind you, there would be Vajrapani. As long as you're a true tantrika, behind you, there would be Vajrapani Bodhisattva. Unless you reach a severe precept that Vajrapani would abandon you, and the Vajra protectors too will abandon you. If you created grave transgressions, all the protectors will abandon you. Remember this. For a spiritual cultivator, if you uh, violated the five heinous sins, then all the Dhamma, all the protectors will abandon you. Then you're not called a Tantrika anymore. You're not called a Buddhist practitioner anymore. Mm. We'll just change the term and add lan in the beginning. It's a uh, it's a Taiwanese slang. So that's not the tantrika anymore. If you have uh, transgressed the five heinous sins and the grave transgressions, then all the protectors will abandon you. There is no need even when you chant anything, any Vajra mantras, protector mantras, or Mahabala mantra, there is no use whatsoever. A true tantric practitioner, if you truly abide by the precepts, then behind you there would be Vajrapani Bodhisattva, according to Sakyamuni Buddha. Om Bodhi Lanzari. Pani is Vajra Pani or Vajra Hen Bodhisattva in Chinese literally. Om Bodhilanjani. Yeah, primarily if you made a transgression, a grave transgression or being greedy, then you're not a tantric practitioner at all. So, if you practice the four preliminary practices, then Vajrapani is already behind you. At this time, if you chant Mahabala Mantra, it's fine. Or you chant Adha Protector Mantra, it's fine. Even if you don't chant Mahabala Heart Mantra, or you don't chant any other Vajra or Protector Mantra, you still have a protector, Vajrapani, to protect you. Now, do you understand? Which month is the scariest? And the mom said, I'm not afraid of the ghost month, I'm just afraid of time. And the dad said, 
This is rhyming in Chinese, but <laughs> it's not in English. It's like when business is bad. And the sister said that the, the dead ghost is enjoy. Enjoying the flowers and the... But the brother said, just afraid of the wife going to the to the department store. And a spiritual cultivator, what is he or she most afraid of is to transgress a grave precept that all the protectors abandon you, that all the demons can capture you, all the ghosts can capture you. And the ghost would immediately attach to you, and illnesses will come to you, and the demon of illness will come find you because you have no more protectors. So all the demons and ghosts can capture you because you have no more defense. So a spiritual cultivator is most afraid to breach grave transgressions of the precepts, like the 14 roots, root downfalls of Tantrayana. If you breach any one of them, you will definitely experience the downfall, downfall. You would fall down that you have no qualification to rise. Now we will continue on Lamde. What is the complete assimilation? The first one is the warmth of discerning practice of the beginning part, the warmth of the nine aerial accumulations, the warmth of the in warmth. So this warmth in Tantrayana means increase. It doesn't mean it's warmth or the burning of the inner fire. That character represents increase. Also, the instructions on the goals of arising to meditation assimilated by the above three classifications. So, meditation can increase our goals. So three kinds of progress or increase. The verse, practicing not to lose. If you practice, you will not lose, and you will not get lost. The verse, seen, or phenomena like smokes, the first thing that you see. So those uh, sights that you see in your meditation, you see flames, uh, light, you see uh, rays of light or uh, sunsets. 
the verse dream. So you dream of riding on a horse that's called the sensation, which is the spiritual experiences of the body. So dreams are a kind of spiritual experience. Like what just said, you dream of bathing or showering. That means you have cleansed it. Or you dream of riding on a celestial horse flying in the sky. That means you have eradicated the earthly karma. Or you dream you're sitting on top of a white lotus rising to the sky. That means you have eradicated the earthly karma. These are all spiritual experiences. Many people dream of combing their hair and lots of insects falling off. That means you have eradicated the karma of your body. Or you dream of eating some white food and vomiting black things. That means that's the repentance sign that the white thing entering into you, that means you're taking in the white karma and you're spitting out the black karma. The verse 3-3 three, three, refers to 3 times 3 equals 9. <laughs> what? <laughs> of course, 3 times 3 is 9. <laughs> <laughs> you think I know nothing about math? That means increase or progress the verse, like the discriminating practice of the beginning part, refers to the discernment of the three kinds of warmth, each of which includes three instructions, for, so for a total of nine parts. So three times three equals nine. That means increase. Three kinds of increase. For three dharma, portal of nine. In the warmth of the discerning practice of the beginning part, one sees human corpse during meditation with phenomena. In the dream, one dreams of dream corpse, and in the spiritual experience of the body, one feels one's own physical body, etc. So in meditation, one sees human corpse. In the dream, one dreams of dream corpse, and in the body sensation, one feels one own physical body. So this means increase. Thus, the three warmths of the nine aerial accumulation are Amidst the phenomena, one sees the cities of the six realms. In the dreams, one feels the six realms follow in the all existence, and amidst the bodily sensation, one performs all kinds of dances. So, you see cities of the six realms. So, what is the six realms? What are the six realms? You see the heavenly realm, the human realm, Azura realm, the hell realm, animal realm, and the hungry ghost realm. The cities, which is the phenomena of the six realms. And in the dreams, one dreams of the six realms 
that the six realms follow all existences. And the bodily sensation, one performs all kinds of dances. This also means increase. And there are three kinds to the warmth of the increased accumulation of the light drops. So the light drops are getting more and more and accumulate. The start of affinity of the phenomena, one sees 3,000 great worlds and the sun and the moon, etc. In the dream sensation, one dreams of the 3,000 great worlds and the sun and the moon, etc. And in the bodily sensation, one sits amidst the rays of red light. So for a total of nine parts. So in the meditation, you see the 3,000 great worlds and the sun and the moon. In the dream, you also dream of the 3,000 great worlds and the sun and the moon. And for your own body, you feel like you sit amidst the rays of red light. And these are all kinds of increases. The verse universally sees the three realms, refers not to other affinity but to the appearance of the intrinsic nature. Dwell on this meditation. So what is the three realms? Oh. So if we say about the heavenly realms, there are three realms in heavens, the realm of desire, the realm of form, and the realm of no form. So when the three realms appear, you just ignore it. So you have abandoned the three realms. Refers not to other affinity, but the appearance of the intrinsic nature. So this means that your original self-nature has started to appear. So at this time, when you meditate, you dwell in your own self-nature. If you see the realm of no form, the realm of form, and the realm of desire, and you meditate, you don't meditate in the realm of no form, and you don't meditate in the realm of form, and you don't meditate in the realm of desire either. Then you miss the innate or the original Buddha nature. Then you should just dwell to meditate amidst your own Buddha nature, amidst the Buddha nature. Your affinity is not in the realm of no form, the realm of form, nor the realm of desire. So you abandon the three realms. At this time, your Buddha nature would appear, then you meditate amidst your Buddha nature. That's what it means here. On the public transport, a man felt a thief was uh, was uh, rub getting his wallet and he's trying to be humorous and said it's hey you're too late my wife was faster than you although it's payday today 
Someone is even more, it's even better, it's his wife. An employee told the boss, I don't feel good today, I want to take a day off. And the boss asked, where? Which part you don't feel? And the employee replied, well, I don't feel good working. As a spiritual cultivator, we have to practice every day. You cannot tell me, tell Grandmaster, I don't practice today. Why? Because I don't feel good practicing today. You cannot say such things. As a spiritual cultivator, as a sadaka means spiritual cultivator, so you have to cultivate, you have to practice every day. That's your homework. That's your homework. You have to do it every day. So after you take refuge, you have to start with the four preliminary practices, any one of them, chanting the fourfold refuge mantra, to increase your faith, take refuge, Namo Kurupe, to take refuge in our own lineage root guru, take refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. And you have to chant it every day to increase your own affinity with the Guru, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. And this increase in Tantrayana is called warmth. By performing great prostration, when you lay flat on your whole body, that's also a kind of repentance. That's also repentance. You are completely immersed in the Guru, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. In front, you respectfully pay homage or prostrate to the Guru, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. And for the great offering, you make offering of everything to the Root Guru, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. That indicates your, the respect of your body and mind. And the dependence dharma, that you want to cleanse all of your karma. So this kind of increase is called warmth. Is to increase your affinity for spiritual cultivation from bad to good from evil to virtuous, so you cannot be indolent or lazy. The, uh, the teacher said, if you don't understand, you can ask me. And the next day, Xiaoming brought a lot of notes to ask the Guru, what are you doing? But didn't you say that if you, <laughs> if there's anything you don't understand, you can find me in person? This is misunderstanding of Chinese. But Xiaoming thought uh, to tear the piece of paper. So in our spiritual cultivation, we have to have the correct thought, not misunderstandings. Like today, 
like spiritual cultivation is like walking on a path. You cannot walk on other people's path. If you walk on the side, and then you walk on the other s like or if you drive on the other path then there would be accident because that's the other direction and you cannot go over this line or that line you have to be on the right path on the so you should not misunderstand then you would be diverted so starts with a small difference then but you would end up very far the the more you the more you walk the further away you are like if you worship ghost and you create connection with the ghosts instead of the buddhas then the more you progress the worse you get the further away you get whom we should respect is Guru, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, not ghosts. It doesn't include ghosts. It's not that you add Namo Oni, yeah. Oni in Japanese means ghost. Who ever taught you to say Namo Oni, yeah? That's taught by the ghost witch. So, don't get it wrong. It'll be, it'll be far off. It's been really hot recently. That's really true. Three ways of uh, cooling off think about your partner, then you would cool off halfway second. Think about our own savings and you would be cooling off even more. And think about our look and figure a few years ago and then look at yourself in the mirror, then you would feel cold from head to toes. Uh, let me look at myself in the mirror. I carry a photo on me when I was in my 20s. I was wearing a, a youthful suit and with long hair split apart and I could uh, flip my hair, the photo. I am really cool. I feel cool all over my body. After the wife, after marriage, my I feel that wife felt getting fatter and cried and said, I have to lose weight. If I keep gaining weight, I would be um, ridiculed by my husband and then abandoned. And the husband said, how dare I, how could I, how could I throw you off, you're so heavy. I don't have such strength. So that's really time to lose weight. In 
in high school one time, I pass on the no, um, a cheat note, and it was discovered by the teacher. And uh, the class just ate the note and said that, oh, I'm chewing on the gum. And the teacher said, <laughs> so then I just blow a balloon to show me. My classmate to give me a cheat sheet, and I got it in my hand, and I took a look, and from beginning to end, cross and circle, and then multiple choices, one, two, three, one, two, three, the answers, so I copied them. And after I completed, the classmate next to me said, oh, now it's me. And then I gave it to him. And then he put it in his palm. He didn't even look. And then the examiner passed by, back and forth, back and forth next to him. And then he took a look. Oh no. <laughs> it was sweat. <laughs> it was all blurred, whether it's cross or, sun or circles. And he cried. He was so scared that he sweat, his hands sweat. So the, the writings on the note all got blurred. So oh, our experience cheating is very difficult to say. Uh, is cheating during exams considered a breaching a precept? Because it's in the past, so it's not counted how many Benny home. <laughs>